The Inga Glass Company in Germany is one of the oldest in the world, still making Christmas ornaments the traditional way, blowing glass and painting them by hand. Every single creation is coated from the inside first with real silver. We're 15 generations of glass making. There were once over 1,500 manufacturers in this part of Eastern Germany, making it the glass ornament capital of the world. Even Queen Victoria was a client. But today, many Christmas decorations are made of plastic and 87% are mass-produced in China. Germany makes less than 1%. So how did this family business with a secret sparkle manage to survive while hundreds went out of business? We went to Germany to see how this iconic craft is still standing. Every new Christmas ornament starts life as a drawing. A design like this can take up to six hours. Chris Henkel then spends a week bringing it to life in the form of a clay figure. And he's the only one at the company doing this job. These ganzen Werkzeuge, die ich benutze, aber allem voran, was das A und das O ist, sind einfach meine Hände. In jeder Figur steckt auch ein kleines bisschen was von mir. This method of blow molding ornaments hasn't changed for nearly 200 years. Matthias Fiebig first heats a glass tube to 800 degrees Celsius. He then places it in a mold and starts blowing. He has only seconds to work before it cools down and hardens. Reinblasen, weil das Fenster ist ganz kurz. Too much air can make the glass thin and fragile. Too little will make it thick and it won't fill up the mold. Some shapes, like the classic bauble, don't need a mold. Nowadays, Matthias can make around 450 ornaments a day. Hat auch sehr weh getan, aber man lernt daraus. Man achtet dann auch besser drauf. Matthias says learning new shapes can still be a challenge. Jahr für Jahr kommen neue Ornamente mit dazu und es ist immer eine Herausforderung, das dann so zu meistern. The glass ornaments are now ready to take on the colors of Christmas. Workers start by coating the inside with a solution of silver nitrate. They swirl the liquid around to make sure it's evenly coated. Then dip it in hot water, which will trigger a chemical reaction that makes the silver stick to the glass. This inner coating is what gives the ornaments their silver mirror effect. They are washed with cold water and left to dry for one hour. Then it's time to add color to the outside. The glass creations are transformed into Inga Glass's classic red bauble and into these mini pickles and yellow lemons. The coat is thin enough to allow the mirroring from the silver to still shine through. Also, wenn ich das jetzt getaucht habe und ich schiebe das durch die Bahn durch, dort kommt warme Luft raus und dadurch trocknet das. Und das dauert ungefähr 5-6 Minuten. The warm air actually comes straight from gas burners used by the glass blowers. Inga Glass makes 1.5 million ornaments every year. Some decorations get a layer of spray paint and they have over 100 colors to choose from. The most popular are red, gold and silver. Once they're dry, it's time for the next paint layer. Stephanie Greiner-Boom is one of the 15 full-time painters. She's been working here for 20 years and can paint as many as 110 ornaments in a day. Kommt mir vor wie selber Märchen, zum Beispiel. Sehr schön. Wie als Prinzessin oder, ja. <laughs> Most of the ornaments here are painted by hand. They are left to dry for 20 minutes. 
And this is the final touch, a star-shaped crown. Also Sternkrönchen äh, ist unser Markenzeichen, ist seit 1986 geschützt. Steffi Schneider checks every piece one last time to make sure it's ready for shipping. Some decorations get a final flourish, like feathers. Birds are very, very important in our collection and we have about 40 different birds. Inga Glass has been making birds like this since the factory opened. At the time, each glass factory in town had its own signature ornament. The company sells around 900 different Christmas decorations but it has an archive of 15,000 to fall back on. Most of them are stored in this vault and the collection keeps growing. Every year we have about 100 new molds. Marie Moulablech is the 15th generation of her family to work in the glassmaking business. Growing up in a company and a family of glassblowers was very colorful. I did more drawing on glass balls than on paper. In 1597, one of their ancestors helped found the town of Lausha, which became known for its glasswork. Back then, people across Germany decorated Christmas trees with apples, nuts and candles. The first glass ornaments were made in 1847 by an artisan in Lausha. At the time, Europe was going through a devastating food crisis. Food was expensive, so what he did was he just built it out of glass. In 1848, Queen Victoria brought a Christmas tree to Windsor Castle and adorned it with ornaments from Lausha, and the trend grew. By 1925, glass ornaments became the town's biggest industry with over 1,500 businesses. But everything came to a halt after World War II. The Soviet authorities who took control of what would become East Germany put a stop to all glass ornament production. And Lausche found itself on the wrong side of the border. Many glassmakers, including Marie's paternal grandfather, fled to the West. They started with glass blowing in their own house in the basement. He opened Inga Glass with his wife in 1953 in Neustadt by Coburg. When my grandfather Heinz Müllerblich came to West Germany here in Neustadt, um, he wasn't able to bring that much things with him, actually nothing. Meanwhile, production flourished abroad. In the United States, the glass ribbon machine allowed a factory to blow up to 300,000 glass ornaments a day. And in the 1950s, more durable plastic ornaments began to replace glass ones. Production became so fast and cheap that many German ornament makers could not compete. By 2021, 87% of Christmas decorations were made in China, while less than 1% were made in Germany. The consuming changed and like hand blown, hand painted wasn't that important anymore. Inga Glass is one of the few businesses here that managed to survive. But it couldn't make it on tradition alone. So in the 1990s, Marie's parents decided that if they couldn't beat the competition, they'd have to join them. My father thought about other possibilities of how this handicraft can go into future. And the only possibility he found was to get to know the Chinese market better and to um, uh, learn about the industrial making of glass ornaments. They started producing a line of cheaper machine-made glass and plastic ornaments to help keep the business afloat. Peak season, of course, is in summer, actually, because then we have to produce everything for Christmas and everything has to be sent to the customers in time. Nowadays, they sell to retailers and department stores in 40 countries. Outside of Europe, their biggest market is the US. The ornaments are in carton shafted, in carton eingebockt and halt schön mit Papier ausgestopft, dass es halt nicht wackelt und nicht rutscht und sich halt nicht bewegt. 
They even have stores throughout Germany. Their cheapest glass ornaments are $8 a piece. The priciest go for $100, like the Nikolaus Präparis. Marie says she's inspired by her family's story and is determined to keep the craft alive. It's just what my heart beats for and it's my passion and I can't imagine to stop with it. <laughs>